So my name is Laura Morrison. I'm an orthopedic surgery resident at the University of Calgary. I've just completed a two-year master's in medical education and I'm now restarting my clinical work as an R3. This study is called Pregnancy and Parenthood as a Woman in Orthopedic Surgery, a Scoping Review. And thank you to my co-authors, Dr. Annalise Abbott, Zoe Mack, and Dr. Prism Schneider, and Dr. Lori Heemstra. We know that over 50% of medical students in Canada are women, yet there continues to be less than 15% of women as orthopedic surgeons in Canada. And there are a few reasons for this discrepancy that have been suggested. And one of these is a perceived incompatibility of being a woman in orthopedic surgery as well as a parent. So there seems to be a mismatch between the compatibility of orthopedic surgery and family life. And so that's why we wanted to investigate um, this sort of perceived cause to understand what were the perceptions and experiences of women in orthopedic surgery um, who have you know, gone through this process and also what were the perceptions and experiences of colleagues um, who work with women in orthopedic surgery who um, have or want to have children during their career. There were two uh, main findings that came out of this scoping review uh, that really surprised me and my co-authors as well. And the first one is that the average length of maternity leave taken by orthopedic surgery residents in the United States is approximately six weeks. And it's not that much longer for staff surgeons in the United States. It's approximately eight weeks. Um, and that really stood out to me because I had really never heard of another working professional taking such a short amount of uh, maternity or parental leave. And when we looked into this a bit further, it actually had been uh, quite restricted in the past based on the restrictions put in place by the American Board of Orthopedic Surgery, which required that residents uh, could not take greater than six weeks of vacation or time off for their program in order to be eligible for the exam. And they've since changed that so that it's an average of six weeks per year over the five years. So residents have the opportunity to sort of combine um, weeks from other years in order to take a longer maternity leave, but um, really just this restriction on the ability uh, to take parental leave from residency uh, was quite shocking. And I will point out that um, most of our data was from the United States with a couple studies from the United Kingdom. So we actually don't have um, any information related to Canadian residents. Um, and that is something that we want to look into a bit further because we know um, here in Canada, our parental leave policies are a little bit different. So in Alberta, for example, residents are entitled to 17 weeks of maternity leave with pay, uh, which is quite different than the United States, where some individuals were um, taking leave without pay or using their vacation time in order to take parental leave. Something else that uh, surprised us um, from this study and from other studies of, as well that have found similar results is that uh, women in orthopedic surgery who uh, intend or attempt or have children during their career are at higher risk uh, for pregnancy-related complications and also have higher rates of infertility. And so this is a concern, obviously, for women who are considering going into the field and um, are, are learning about these uh, risks that are associated with becoming pregnant during their career. And uh, one of these so both of these sort of statistics really do require uh, more investigation because we know that some of these risks are associated with the advanced maternal age of many women in orthopedics who have decided to delay having children uh, in order to accommodate their career. And so this could be accounting for some of those increased numbers that we see, um, but really a bit more investigation is needed in order to determine if these uh, risks are coming from advanced maternal age or is it something related to the orthopedic work environment as well? There are uh, several hazards that we are aware of that women can potentially be exposed to in the work environment. Uh, and these include, um, you know, fluoroscopy during x-ray as well as uh, chemicals used in the operating room. 
However, there are you know, opportunities and strategies available to mitigate these risks for pregnant and parenting uh, women. And we do talk about these in our study as well. Something that was a little bit discrepant, which was that although uh, residents and trainees faced similar challenges as did staff, there were subtle differences between those experiences. So when it came to uh, trainees sort of thinking about when was the optimal time to have children, you know, the old adage is that there's no good time. And so many trainees opt to delay having children until the end of residency and sometimes the end of fellowship. Um, but some of the questionnaire-based studies with attendings or staff surgeons uh, reported that many women regret delaying having children or wish they had children sooner. Uh, so I think that just points to an opportunity to have a bit more discussion around, you know, what are the pros and cons of, of childbearing at certain times? Um, because I'm sure there is no right answer, but just being aware of the different options and it is possible to have children during training and it's also possible to have children um, later. So that was one way that uh, trainees and attendings differed. Another one was around um, sort of the financial loss incurred with parental leave. As a trainee uh, in Canada anyways, many trainees have the opportunity to have paid parental leave. Whereas as a staff person, when you take time off work, there's often still uh, costs that are being incurred despite uh, not working, such as paying for overhead and paying for medical office assistance. And there was one paper that actually looked at quantifying this number and found that for residents, the cost of maternity leave is around $150 against them, whereas the cost against the staff surgeon is around $45,000. So quite a big difference there. Um, and then the last one is just around um, the accessibility and limitations of policies related to parental leave. So whereas residents had difficulty finding or accessing policies, they did ultimately for the most part exist because this is mandated by law essentially. Whereas the situation is a little bit different again as a staff um, because oftentimes um, in the Canadian setting anyway, and as well as the American setting, staff surgeons are self-employed or they're sort of working under a consultant based model. And so there may not be any applicable parental leave policies that they can access. And it can leave staff feeling sort of um, that they don't have adequate policy support in order to make some of these decisions. For myself, um, I am not a pregnant or parenting woman in orthopedics, uh, but I am a woman in orthopedics and I, I'm keenly interested in recruiting more women to the field and ensuring that, you know, the opportunities and the experiences that women have uh, during their career are not discriminatory. And when I sort of started to investigate this topic and, and realized that there was this perceived incompatibility, of course, myself, I had wondered the same thing, if it was really possible um, to be a mom and be a surgeon. Um, it, it made me more curious, but really uh, what sort of the straw that broke the camel's back for me is that here in Calgary in our residency program, uh, we've had several residents, uh, men and women, have children during the last four years that I've been around. Um, and I saw how really um, accepting and welcoming our colleagues as well as staff were to that experience. And it made me want to really just investigate what those experiences are like and sort of take a qualitative lens or a qualitative approach uh, to this problem, which is why when we conducted this scoping review, uh, we sort of, we did it using thematic analysis rather than focusing just on the quantitative numbers. And so that's really what got me interested is I, I wondered if the tide was turning in terms of people being more open to uh, discussing what it's like to have children in orthopedics and being sort of willing to act as a mentor for residents coming through the program who want to become parents during their training even. And so that was really the impetus to take on this research.
In terms of important questions that have been unanswered by our study and how we hope to address them, and I've alluded to this already, is that most of the data that we collected is um, set in the United States as well as the United Kingdom, and there were no studies that specifically looked at the experience of preg pregnant and parenting women orthopedics in Canada. And so our next step, sort of building off what I had mentioned in the last question, is to take a qualitative approach and hopefully conduct some semi-structured interviews with women who have had uh, children or become parents during their training in a Canadian program and identify what were the perceived uh, barriers, difficulties, challenges that they face so that we can identify those and hopefully come up with strategies to mitigate or address any issues that are happening here in the Canadian context but also to understand sort of what are the what are the strengths of that experience and what did people take out of you know uh, becoming a parent during their training and what were the positives sort of moving forward so i have heard from a few individuals who have become parents during their training that it's the sort of number one protective factor against burnout during their training it's just the ability to come home and and see your child at the end of the day and so that's our next step is to take a qualitative approach to answering some of these questions in the Canadian context. How has this work impacted how I view my profession? On the one hand, I was shocked to see some of the examples that uh, were out there in the literature of um, discriminatory comments and behavior towards uh, women who became pregnant during their training or during their staff years. Um, but on the other hand, I do, like I mentioned before, uh, what I've seen, at least in my context in Calgary, um, is really just an outpouring of support from the staff in our program uh, towards those individuals who have become pregnant during their training. And even uh, one of my colleagues mentioned that uh, some of the uh, male staff were even more willing to have conversations about what it's like to be uh, a parent in orthopedics and discuss some of the issues around work-life balance. And so I think it has allowed me to just have a greater appreciation of, of what issues exist. And I still uh, very much view the profession uh, in a positive light, but understand that there is work to be done, especially uh, in this topic. And there are, there are several issues that sort of came up in our research that are addressable uh, with concrete changes. And, Sort of those two things that I think are the most tangible that could take away as suggestions um, from this paper is to increase the accessibility of women in orthopedics who have the experience of becoming pregnant or becoming parents and just allow them to be either um, visible mentors or visible leaders to students and residents and other staff um, that they work with if they are willing, and then to take it the next step further would be to you know, promote these women, if they're interested, into uh, positions in academic settings and positions of leadership. So again, that there's a trickle-down effect that you know, women who are coming up through the field or interested in orthopedics are seeing other women who have families and feel that, oh yeah, it is possible to be um, successful, have a successful career in orthopedics and potentially also take on additional non-clinical work such as academics or research while at the same time um, being a parent and being a good parent um, if that's what somebody is interested in. And then uh, further to that, uh, one of the limitations that really uh, was obvious from our results is that there is a lack of accessibility and transparency when it comes to parental leave, particularly around finding policies related to parental leave, and then further to that, policies related to um, lactation and breastfeeding, as well as childcare. And so, you know, ensuring that every institution that is going to come across or be involved in hiring or supporting students, residents, or staff should have very clear and accessible policies related to uh, parental leave and then subsequent to that there should also be um, areas that define 
adoption leave, um, surrogacy, or what it's like if you have a miscarriage, but you've already made arrangements for parental leave. Uh, those are some of the gaps that are currently existing uh, in our program. So those are two of the things that uh, we think can be done to make a difference and start to sort of close this gap that we see in terms of gender imbalance in orthopedics.